The paper wasps will be here soon. For many people, dealing with wasps involves not noticing them until they become a big nuisance, then buying a can of some sort of long shot spray and dousing a large nest under the soffit of their home. And then there's running away before either being attacked by the wasps or breathing in the poison they just exposed themselves to. Really, who needs it? Well, I'm here to let you know how you can keep from having to use and store toxic chemicals around your home. If you'll just send me 1995, I'll let you in on my secret. I'm joking, of course. The solution won't cost you a thing. Now, I don't mind having paper wasps around my home. In fact, I like paper wasps. They're quite beneficial. However, they often try to create nests in the worst places. Above the garage door, above the front door, back door, etc. And when those nests get a little bigger, the wasps typically get more defensive and may lash out. That's really when paper wasps are most aggressive, when they think their nests are being threatened. Sometimes they can be a little touchy in the fall when food supplies are dwindling, but that's not really germane to this conversation. However, the queens in the spring can wake up in a bit of a bad mood, which is understandable. I will produce a comprehensive video in the future about all things paper wasps, but for now, let me tell you how to keep your home nest free. When very cold weather arrives in the fall and or winter, all remaining non-essential wasps die off. The only ones that survive are queens. Well, aren't they special? Actually, they are. These queens are gravid, and they are dependent on to survive the winter and carry on the species. Now, these pregnant queens seek out shelter in which to hibernate during the cold weather. Once it begins to warm in early spring, the queens attempt to find a location in which to start a nest. A queen will begin laying eggs as the chambers are created. When these wasps first reach adulthood, most will become workers and will assist the queen with making the nest larger and larger to create the colony. However, it is when the queen is first creating the nest that you should take action and that occurs in March and April, sometimes May. About every few days to a week, walk around and inspect your home where you think a nest could be built. If you do it weekly, you will almost certainly find the nest when it is very small. Additionally, the queen must leave the nest many times a day to gather wood in which to make paper. Is there something in my teeth? And because she is the sole builder, the nest is often left unguarded during this time. If you can reach the small nest, which will most likely be a stem or maybe even a chamber or two at this point, just reach up with your fingers and pull it down. No muss, no fuss. When the queen returns, aside from being disappointed, she will either attempt to build there again because she is unsure of what happened, or she will move on in search of a better place. But she will not attempt a nest at the same place more than twice. I do this every year, and it is much easier than dealing with a big family of wasps. As mentioned previously, I will produce a comprehensive video about paper wasps in the future. If you enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe if you haven't already. Thank you. Okay. And you got it? Yep. Ha ha ha.